This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. Just the mass amount of people that will come to Reno Tahoe, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. JetBlue is the latest airline to add another flight into Reno, offering daily service to and from Long Beach. Ah. What the growth of the airport looks like is Money Watch Tops Channel 2 News at 530. By the way, this is JetBlue's second flight in Torino. Of course, they started service to New York City, mm -hmm. JFK, about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago. Good evening, I'm Landon Miller. I'm Kristen Revington. Thank you for keeping it here tonight. JetBlue is offering an introductory rate as low as $19 mm. for a Reno to Long Beach flight. And as Paul Nelson found out, the growing number of flights and passengers is good news for the economy in our region. It may seem like a pep rally for the Damani Ranch Mustangs, but these guys are here to celebrate the arrival of JetBlue's second Reno flight. The new Long Beach route is one of 120 daily flights in and out of the Reno Tahoe International Airport. Reno is just a special place. I mean, it, it's a special place that I've wanted to come to for years. We've talked about this for a long time, and to actually see it happen is just absolutely thrilling. Berg says the expansion is a result of the success of JetBlue's Reno to New York flight. Not only does this offer another non-stop flight, but Long Beach's JetBlue's West Coast hub, offering a number of connections to other cities. We're definitely continuing to grow, and I think we'll see some continued growth out in the West Coast too as well. Um, I think we'll have more surprises coming in the future. Officials say this is an important flight, not just to offer more options for customers, but for the overall economy for Northern Nevada. Well, what we found is Reno used to be a tourism market where it was just basically tourist seats. Now it's business and tourism, and airplane airlines pay attention. Reno's added 11 new flights in the last 14 months, but Reno's airport is still trying to get back to pre-recession levels for passengers and flights. We haven't totally caught up. We lost about a third of our activity and our passengers here, but in our last 12 months, we grew in passengers by seven, about 8%, so we're going in the right direction. Officials say adding another flight to Southern California is a big catch because so many of Reno's visitors come from that area. It's the LA Basin. It's large. It's huge. It's got the biggest concentration of populace, so it just gives us another added stream into Reno. Whether passengers are coming to the biggest little city for fun or work, officials say a healthy airport is critical for a healthy economy. I think we're an economic engine of the community and not only for tourism, but certainly for business. JetBlue doesn't have any immediate plans to add another flight into Reno, but it hasn't ruled it out either. Covering Money Watch, Paul Nelson, Channel 2 News. Mm, looks like a lot of fun. Paul, thank you. All right, how would you like to uh, get free parking in downtown Reno every Friday? Hmm? Well, now you can, thanks to some new Reno license plates. Uh, all right, close your eyes and imagine this. It features Reno's iconic arch, the skyline, the Truckee River, and the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Now, all of the extra funds come from purchasing these plates actually help fund parks and recreation in the biggest little city. So this is just one more tool in the toolbox to be able to support uh, those needed facilities and programs that, that Renoites love so much. Yeah, there you see it right there. And it's not just free parking, but these plates have more benefits, yeah, including an annual City of Reno Parks Pass. Plates with Bennings. Let's hashtag it. Now, the initial fee for the plates is $62 and are available from the DMV. Now, here's meteorologist Angela Schilling's first look at the Pinpoint 2 forecast. And if you are road tripping, you might run into a few lightning strikes or some thunderstorms, especially if you are traveling eastbound. That's where we do have a red flag warning in place now just confined to eastern Nevada, and that goes through 11 p.m. tonight. Back off to the west, we're not expecting any showers or thunderstorms. Uh, all the activity is staying to our east, and at the moment, we don't have anything on our, our strike counter, so it's down to zero, so that's good, but it's possible we could see more activity as the night goes on. Now, back off to the west, uh, we really aren't seeing much in the way of cloud cover either. Everything kind of staying to our east here in the Trekkie Meadows. Our winds are light, too. I mean, sustained anywhere between 5 to 15, so that's always good news, especially when we're so dry. Dry air tends to heat up pretty quickly, so it's another warm day today. 92 degrees is the current temperature in Reno, 79 in South Lake, 95 in Fallon, 95 in Lovelock, 100 in Bishop. So another warm day. We did stay dry today, but our chances for rain will get higher as the week goes on. I'll have a full look at your forecast coming up in just a few minutes.
finally. All right, Angela, thanks so much. Reno police have identified two people who were killed in a fatal rollover crash. This happened Saturday night. The rollover happened just before 8 p.m. at the intersection of Rock Boulevard and Mill Street. Authorities say a vehicle traveling north on Rock ran a red light and struck another vehicle traveling east on Mill. 30-year-old Saul Garcia of Sparks and 29-year-old Jeanette Gonzalez Contreras, who were in the eastbound vehicle, were declared dead on scene. The other driver, who has not yet been identified, was transported to Renown and is expected to survive. Police say he was under the influence and is expected to be charged with DUI after being released from the hospital. Moving on to School Watch now. Washoe County's littlest students began school today. All day kindergarten is available at all district schools free of charge. This, by the way, is the second year that Washoe County has offered full day classes and teachers are noticing a positive impact. Andy Guevara has that story. Me too, said his father. The school day began with reading because building a strong foundation early is the key to success, say educators. That's one of the reasons Washoe County School District offers free, full day kindergarten. We've been able to really see the kids blossom with that. They have the time to develop those ideas. They have the time to experiment with what it means to put in writing what I'm thinking. We can give more one-on-one -on -one attention. We can get reading groups then, and we can still incorporate play, which is a huge part in kindergarten. There was playtime before class this morning. It helps shake off some of the nerves, especially for the moms and dads. And even though it's a big step for their little ones, most parents agree all-day kindergarten has benefits. Works better for working parents because it allows us to um, drop the kids off and go work. I hope he'll learn a lot and you know he'll find things he likes the most. Go all the way to the carpet, okay? Teacher Christine Foster has taught all day kindergarten for eight years and says the little ones do a great job handling the long schedule. They have uh, so much energy and they love school, so it's really an opportunity to foster the love of education. Take your back and you can slide it inside. And a high five. But of course, educators understand young students have limits. There's a lot of recess and there's little quiet times in the afternoon in August and September as the kids get used to the full day. All but five schools in the district began kindergarten today. The others that are undergoing renovations will welcome kindergartners on August 29th. Covering School Watch, Andy Guevara, Channel 2 News.